Among the first series of new rolling stock to be delivered following privatization, the Alstom Caradia range of diesel and electric multiple units got this new era off to a bad start, as each of these trains illustrated severe reliability and build quality faults that would take years to remediate, and even lead to their premature withdrawal from service in the long run. The Caradia family, for the UK network, comprises five individual classes of multiple unit, the Class 175 Regional Express Diesel Multiple Unit, the Class 180 High Speed Diesel Multiple Unit, the Class 334 Commuter Electric Multiple Unit, the Class 458 Third Rail Electric Multiple Unit, and the similarly built Class 460 Third Rail Unit for the Gatwick Express run. Each of these units were ordered as part of the franchise commitments of the various train operating companies that broke up the former domain of British Rail among themselves following privatisation in 1994, each of these firms identifying the need to replace ageing or unreliable stock inherited from the British Rail sectors, in order to ensure added capacity, safety and efficiency, so as to promote and encourage train travel to as many passengers as possible. While British Rail was a politically conscious business, due to its ties to the British government, which prohibited its ability to procure rolling stock from outside the UK, the newly privatised train operators could call upon foreign builders with proven products to help develop new models for the network, with the likes of Siemens, Bombardier, General Motors and Stadler all being enlisted to deliver these trains. French multinational rolling stock manufacturer Alstom was at the time developing a basic platform of which both diesel and electric multiple units could be derived, this family of upcoming trains being dubbed the Caradia, and will provide a perfect mixture of comfort, operational performance, efficiency and safety, so as to meet the needs of the latest passenger and legislative demands going into the new millennium. Taking an interest in Alstom's new design, the first of this family to be ordered for the UK was the Class 175, with First Northwestern, the private operator for trains across northwestern England and North Wales, placing an order for 27 units at a cost of £64 million, and would comprise 11 two-car and 7 three-car diesel multiple units capable of 100 miles an hour, as well as an additional 9 three-car units capable of 125 miles an hour. The overarching intention of the Class 175s was to replace a plethora of ageing stock inherited from the former regional railway sector, including Class 37s with Mark II coaches, Class 101s and Class 309s, with ride smoothness being considered the highest priority for the somewhat under-maintained rural main lines of the Welsh borders in North Wales. Built at the former Metro Camel factory in Washwood Heath, Birmingham, which had been procured by Alstom during the 1989 buyout of Metro Camel, it was decided that the order would be reconfigured to instead comprise 11 two-car and 16 three-car units all of which would only be capable of 110 miles an hour. While in preparation for the arrival of this new stock, purpose-built facilities were established to service these trains at Chester Depot, which would refuel, clean, wash, and perform general maintenance work for the fleet. Upon completion at Washwood Heath, the Class 175s were dispatched to the Seven Valley Railway for initial low-speed testing before additional testing and driver training was conducted at the Old Dalby Test Track from November 1999, the first of these trains officially entering service with First Northwestern from June 20, 2000, serving Birmingham New Street, Crewe and Manchester to Hlundudno, Holyhead, Barrow and Windermere. The second Caradia unit to be ordered by a British private company was the Class 458 Juniper units for Southwest trains the new private operator of both long-distance and commuter trains out of London Waterloo, which was desperately seeking a modern replacement for the increasingly aged slam-door stock of the former Network Southeast sector, including the four CEP and four VEP units that dated back to the mid-1950s. Starting with tenders being issued in November 1996, Alstom were announced to have won the bid for the new commuter unit for the London Southwestern area in early 1997 and will comprise 30 air-conditioned four-car sets built at Washwood Heath alongside the Class 175s that would come to a total contract cost of £90 million. The order for the Class 458 by leasing company Porterbrook initially caused some debate as to a conflict of interest, with both Porterbrook and train operator Southwest Trains sharing the same parent firm in the form of Stagecoach, while at the same time, Porterbrook faced severe scrutiny for extracting significant profits 
from leasing cheaply acquired XBR stock to the private railway companies. Regardless, work continued on the 30 Class 458 units, each set being formed of two motor cars with driver's cabs, an intermediate trailer car, and an intermediate motor car, with the trailer car being provided a pantograph well and space for an alternating current transformer, enabling conversion to 25 kV AC overhead line operation if required at a later date, while the top speed of these trains was 100 miles an hour as driven from 2,000 horsepower traction motors. More notable were the inclusion of concealed end gangways for these trains, with two plug sliding doors on the driving trailers revealing an extendable gangway that provided through access between two coupled units, meaning the full capacity of these trains could be exploited and would allow for a single ticket collector to be able to travel between both sets without impairment. Alongside the Class 458s would be the Class 460s, which were ordered by National Express, the operators of the Gatwick Express franchise, their commitment being to replace the current use of Class 73 electro-diesels from the 1960s in combination with Mark II coaches and Class 489 driving trailer luggage vans. Thus, as Southwest Trains placed their order for the Class 458, National Express did the same during 1997, with the resultant Class 460s being essentially identical to the 458s, but would be configured for the use of a dedicated airport shuttle service between London Victoria and Gatwick Airport, comprising eight sets of eight-car multiple units capable of 100 miles an hour. Internally, the trains would provide two first-class and six standard-class coaches, as well as a dedicated luggage area in one of the driving trailers, dubbed a DMLFO, or Driving Motor Luggage First Open, which would succeed the luggage capacity presented by the Class 489s, the eight sets being expected to run at 15-minute intervals between London and Gatwick Airport throughout the day. The Class 334 commuter units were the next to be ordered and were to be taken on by the Strathclyde Partnership for Transport, or SPT, of the Glasgow area as a means of replacing the ageing Class 303 blue trains of the 1960s, the order being for 43 car units that were to be built at Washwood Heath and would enter traffic from 1999. The Class 334s were essentially identical to the Class 458s, but eschewed the fitting of an end gangway and non-motor trailer with the trains also being powered via 25 kV AC overhead wires, these sets being capable of a 90 mile an hour top speed and would be allocated initially to the Ayrshire and Inverclyde lines. Finally came the Class 180, which were ordered under the franchise commitments of Great Western Trains during October 1997 in order to provide additional capacity on long distance services out of London Paddington, specifically on the run to Cardiff Central. Great Western placing an order for 14 five-car train sets that were of generally the same underpinnings as the Class 175s, but would differ by way of a streamlined nose and a top speed of 125 miles an hour. However, problems began to emerge even before the machines had entered service, with various technical, mechanical and design flaws being identified during testing that meant the introduction into public use for these trains was pushed back time and again thus meaning older stock had to be kept in operation for longer, which caused major logistical problems for the train companies. For the Class 175s, issues relating to these units included clearance problems at Conwy Tunnel in North Wales due to their width, thus requiring a cutting back of the stonework, fault indicators being too sensitive that led to errors being highlighted that didn't exist, which resulted in unnecessary service cancellations, problems with the horn, and, most importantly, issues with the dynamic brake retarders. The dynamic brake issue was due to the cooler group not being able to cope with the sudden surge of hot transmission oil when the brakes were applied, causing the thermostat to exceed its limits and automatically shut down the engines as a fire safety precaution, leading to numerous failures both during test and once the units had entered public service, with the dynamic brake system eventually being disconnected by First Northwestern until the issues could be resolved. For the Class 334s, various teething problems with these trains precluded their proposed entry into service for 1999, issues including underperforming motors and brakes, which were also prone to making a loud whining noise when the train was accelerating or braking, and the lights in the passenger cabin turning off when passing over neutral sections of overhead wiring and not turning back on again, thus requiring a full reset of the lighting systems. At the same time, 
There were complaints as to the low seating capacity when compared to the other types of unit in operation around the Glasgow area, while standing space was also very constrained, though more notable was the original passenger announcement system for the units, which was dubbed Annoying Annie due to its monotone delivery, as well as often mispronouncing the names of upcoming stations. The 40 Class 334s eventually entered service in 2001 after a two-year delay, the inconvenience caused to SPT by the late arrival of these trains being compensated for through an agreement between the rolling stock provider and the Department for Transport, whereby SPT would be offered the option of either two brand new DMUs or EMUs, SPT ultimately taking on two Class 170 Turbostar units built by Bombardier during 2001, numbers 17470 and 17471. For the Class 458s, the first unit, 458001, was delivered to Southwest Trains for pre-acceptance testing on October 31, 1998, but this machine was found to be beset with major technical problems, including a leaking roof that allowed water ingress into both the driver's cabs and passenger saloons, onboard electronics that repeatedly failed, affecting the air conditioning and traction systems, and the train management system, or TMS software, also proving to be unreliable. There were also concerns regarding the coupling process and the design of the end gangways, which, due to their requirement to be extended from behind the nose-mounted doors, meant it took far longer to couple the units together than it did for older forms of stock, while the entire TMS system had to be restarted whenever units were coupled or uncoupled, which meant that the total time taken to join or separate Class 458 units could reach up to 30 minutes. To avoid having to undertake routine couplings and uncouplings, Southwest Trains opted to treat the Class 458s as semi-permanently coupled units, the first Class 458 passenger service eventually taking place on February 25, 2000, but with only two units available for use, while by March 2002, 24 of the 30 units had been delivered, but on an average day only 9-10 to 10 units were actually available for service. The last six Class 458s would ultimately arrive by October 2002, but it would be another seven months before the entire fleet had entered service, the woeful delivery and performance of the Class 458s being a deciding factor in Southwest Trains' April 2001 decision to replace the rest of its slam-door units with an order of 785 vehicles from the competing Siemens De Zero family. Similarly, the Class 460s also experienced a number of reliability problems upon their delivery in 2000 with the most notable concerns being the braking systems, air conditioning, and TMS software, the result being these units essentially requiring a ground-up overhaul of every internal aspect, and eventually, reliability improved to the point that the Class 73s and their loco-hauled Mark II coaches could be retired in 2005, five years later than scheduled. As for the Class 180s, the first of these units were delivered in December 2000, and began high-speed testing during January 2001, but again, reliability faults with the Voith hydraulic transmission design, caused primarily by vibrations from the drive shafts, together with issues relating to the dynamic braking systems, as carried over from the Class 175s, meant by the autumn of 2001, First Great Western was seriously considering cancelling their order in favour of Class 221 Voyagers built by Bombardier. Ultimately, on December 13, 2001, the decision was made to put the Class 180 into service, but at the time only one unit was available to enter operation, while a second unit wouldn't be reliably available for traffic until March 2002, the remaining fleet of Class 180s gradually being whittled into public use throughout 2002 and into 2003, but were exclusively kept on London to Cardiff, Cheltenham and Worcester diagrams as well as an early morning run up from Plymouth and an evening train to Exeter. In the midst of such poor performance, each of these trains faced the possibility of outright withdrawal within only years of their introduction, as was the case with the Class 458s, where only a year after full deployment of the fleet, Southwest Trains announced they would remove the entire class from service in December 2005, with the 458s by this point only managing an average of 4,300 miles between major failures, a fraction of the 21,000-mile average achieved by the Class 444 and 450 de Zero units built by Siemens.
The Class 458 would only remain in service until such time an additional 17 Class 450-0 units had been delivered, while another issue with these machines was the matter of compliance with the Rail Vehicle Accessibility Regulations of 1998, which mandated the accessibility features that vehicle designers and operators needed to provide in order to meet the requirements of the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995, of which the class had numerous exceptions set to expire in July 2006. However, by the time this date was reached, the Class 458s would gain a reprieve through a major reorganization of the Southwest Trains fleet during the franchise renewal for Stagecoach. This agreement being that, in exchange for withdrawing the Class 442 Wessex Electrics units, Class 444 and 450s would be reallocated onto the former diagrams of 442s, while the 458s would be returned from storage and put to work on diagrams that had been vacated by Class 450s. Taken to Bournemouth Depot, the Class 458s were overhauled significantly between 2008 and 2010 in order to address the many problems of their design, as well as to ensure that these trains met the latest disability legislation. The 458s ultimately being returned to work completely refreshed and were capable of achieving 106,000 miles between major failures, a complete reversal from their original reputation of being among Britain's most unreliable trains. This, however, was not reflected for the Class 460s, which continued to illustrate dubious reliability throughout their career with Gatwick Express, so much so that, following their withdrawal from Southwest Trains, Class 442 Wessex Electrics units, built in the late 1980s, were drafted in to replace the 460s on the Gatwick run, despite being generally unsuitable for airport work due to their single-leaf plug doors and narrow internal corridors. With the Class 460s being taken offline after only 8 to 10 years of work, Porterbrook, who also leased the Class 458s, negotiated a conversion deal with Southwest Trains to increase the capacity of their services through the re-engineering of redundant Class 460s into Class 458s, creating a series of six five-car Class 458 units to bolster the existing fleet. Thus, the Class 460s were taken to Doncaster Works, whereupon the streamlined cabins were replaced with nose gangways and a slab-fronted profile similar to that of the Class 458s, the result being six additional 458s created, while redundant centre trailers were used to extend some of the original 458s to five coaches, and the dedicated Class 460 luggage vans, once they had been stripped for parts, were scrapped. Class 334s, meanwhile, proved to be the most reliable of the Caradia designs in use for the UK, and have undergone various refurbishments in order to ensure their continued accordance with the latest disability access legislation, as well as internal improvements and the replacement of their coupler mechanisms to make them compatible with newer Class 380 units. The 334s now dedicated to the North Clyde line on Helensborough Central to Edinburgh, Springburn to Milne Gavey, and Airdrie to Ballock services. After the initial reliability concerns with the Class 175s, these trains would continue to operate without much trouble for the next 18 years, undergoing a refurbishment in 2019 to improve their interior amenities, while the troublesome dynamic brake retarders were gradually reactivated from around 2006 once the faults with the system had been ironed out. However, more trouble came on February 8, 2023, when Unit 175008, travelling from Holyhead to Cardiff Central, caught fire north of Wrexham thus requiring the attendance of the North Wales Fire and Rescue Service, this incident being followed by a further two fires, both of which took place at Wilmslow on February 22nd and March 1st, 2023. The cause was identified to be a build-up of debris, leaf litter and other contaminants in the unit's underfloor engine bays, a pre-existing problem for which a remediation programme was already underway at the Chester Train Care Centre, though by this point, all Class 175s had been removed from service pending the outcomes of the investigation. Gradually, Class 175s returned to work throughout the summer of 2023, but with the onset of newer Class 197s to replace them on their duties, reinstated sets were subsequently removed from service or never re-entered traffic from storage, with the last Class 175 operations in Wales taking place on October 17, 2023, and all sets were dispatched to storage at Ilford Depot pending an uncertain future. Finally, for the Class 180s, these trains continued to show unreliability, 
as well as a lack of capacity on peak hour services, that made them deeply unpopular with First Great Western throughout the mid-2000s, culminating eventually in their withdrawal from use by the operator between 2007 and 2009, after only three to seven years of use. Once out of traffic, these orphaned high-speed express sets were distributed to various companies, with Grand Central being the most consistent operator of the type, employing them on their primary runs between London King's Cross, Sunderland and Bradford, and are now the sole user of the type as of 2024. Other interim uses for the Class 180 included an unusual period with Northern Rail, who employed three sets on stopping services between Hazel Grove, Manchester Victoria and Blackpool from 2008 to 2012, while other mainstream operators included first hull trains, who used them to replace Class 222 Pioneer units, and subsequently East Midlands Railway for services between London and Nottingham. Again, though, the Class 180s continued to illustrate reliability problems, as demonstrated during 2019, where the cumulative number of sets out of service with whole trains required the brief hiring of an older HST set to cover their diagrams, while due to their dubious quality when it comes to mechanics, the future prospects of the class beyond their existing turn of duty with Grand Central has left two examples in store with no potential work. As an outcome of the Caradia unit's exceptionally poor reliability and performance, much of which could be traced back to the antiquated construction equipment and a lack of quality control at the Washwood Heath factory, no more orders for the type were received from other train operators, with the only sustained work for the former Metro Camel factory being in the construction of Class 390 Pendolino tilting trains for the West Coast Main Line. Eventually, on June 20, 2003, Alstom announced that no more new build work would be carried out at the Washwood Heath site after the completion of the 53-unit order for Class 390s in the summer of 2004, though again, due to teething problems and build issues, the last Class 390s wouldn't leave the Washwood Heath plant until as late as March 2005. In the end, the last vehicle built at the plant was carriage 68810, a trailer standard open for Unit 390010, the Cumbrian Spirit while the final full train set to depart the works was 390.016 Virgin Champion on March 22nd, following amendments to the paintwork, the remaining Alstom staff moving to the new power site at Rugby, and by the end of 2005 the 98-year-old facility had been left abandoned, and has now been demolished to make way for the course of High Speed 2 on its way into Birmingham. In summary, the Alstom Caradia units of the UK illustrated, through a sheer lack of build quality and reliability, perhaps the most notorious of the early post-privatisation train classes to enter service, as while these machines were complemented for their comfort and smooth riding, the problems of their mechanical, technical and design faults were ones that led to great frustration among both passengers and train operators, and ultimately created a series of machines that have struggled to shake off their initial poor reputation.